You're listening to an episode of Cap'n Vince, The Early Years. The following is the very first podcast Vince and I ever recorded, from November 21st, 2008, back when we were text blogging to draw interest for a social network that was called Geekvolution before we ever did videos, and we broadcast for a listening audience of about 12 people. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect the ones we hold now. This show was over five years ago, and after myriad life experiences and new cultural influences, we aren't precisely the same people we were when we did these podcasts. Enjoy, and thanks so much for being a part of our community and making Geek Pollution what it is today. Hello everybody, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And this is the very, very first Geek Speak podcast. Hey, that's a clever name, I didn't think of that. Well, it's not It's not real clever, it's the name of the blog, Vince. Oh, that's a good point, I didn't yeah. think of that. Well, somebody else thought of it, and that's the important thing. Yes, good job, Ryan Flanagan. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, um, so Vince and I are uh, bloggers on GeekSpeak, which is um, Geekvolution's uh, blog, and uh, I'm the guy who runs the blog, and Vince is my lackey. <laughs> that makes sense. I didn't even know the name of the blog, so what do you, what's that say about the lackey? <laughs> <laughs> no, Vince is not entirely the lackey. Um, anyway, so uh, <laughs> so if, you, if, you've, if you've been reading the blog at all, um, you know, I'm you, you probably know I write mostly movie reviews and um, stuff about, uh, you know, Star Trek and comics and things like that. And Vince is um, doing, what, the horror reviews? Vince is primarily movie reviews with the exception of one thing that wasn't a movie review. Well, it seems like, no, you've got a couple other things, but it seems like most of the time you just uh, review movies that nobody's probably ever seen. Oh, well, there's, there's like six people in uh, Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> Somewhere out there. They've seen it. Been to Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> Not the people in Hoboken, New Jersey. They got the hell out of there. <laughs> My apologies oh. to Hoboken, New Jersey. <laughs> it's a wonderful so, town. So, you, no, you did, um, let's see. So you've done, you've done a lot of horror blogs, but you've also, um, well, you wrote that, that, I don't know, you wrote that piece a couple weeks ago about the, the, the comic who died. Oh. I didn't know him. Oh, he, he didn't die. It was just a, oh. a, a review oh, of his... Oh, uh, he didn't die. No, 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 no. You wrote one... No, you wrote something oh, about George someone. Carlin. Yeah. That's right. You, oh, did, you did write George that. Carlin. and then But you also wrote a review about a um, about a, a, a comics recent... Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I do other stuff than movie reviews. That's what, a good point. And who was that again? That was uh, Frank Caliendo. Right. He does mostly... Um, Comedy. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but like impressions, right? Yeah. The only See, I comedian read the blog, in my opinion. Impressed. Ooh. I read it. You know why well, I read it? The editor. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I read it to make sure that you didn't mess up anything. That's, that's, that's what an editor does. Uh, yeah, well, anyway. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, because obviously, um, obviously I've never gotten any typos. So, um, what what, uh, what what topics of conversation do we have today, Vince? Let's start with upcoming movies, because me likey movies. <laughs> upcoming, well, what movies are coming up, Vince? That, that you're especially interested in. Well, well, one movie in particular, but we'll get to that one later. The, <laughs> the Punisher War Zone. The uh, the other movie that I'm excited. This isn't really a good time of year for movies. And I don't. There's I don't, nothing going on. I haven't seen anything since Dark Knight. I've not been to the theater since Dark Knight, yeah, and I. Me neither. Um, I want to say I saw probably ten movies over the summer. Mm-hmm. The summer was just one heck of a time for movies, but now there's one movie coming up. It released on the same day that the Punisher will be released, uh, December fifth, and that is. Cadillac Records, I think, is the name. I haven't even heard of that. What is it? It's a, uh, it's a movie about Chess Records recording group. It's a uh, what do you call that? Eh, obviously, I'm extremely informed for this, <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, there's a whole lot of different musicians that are being uh, actual people that are being portrayed. Like Beyonce is playing Etta James, and uh, they don't look anything alike. So it's going to be a suspension of disbelief, especially because they got the popular babe to play Etta James. But uh, she's a good singer, and that'll be okay. Like, Most Def is also is playing uh, Chuck Berry. Okay. So that's pretty cool. That going to be interesting. Be... There, there was a TV movie a long time ago about Chuck Berry. I don't know if you ever saw that. But I it didn't was see it. really interesting. I, I don't know when it was made. It was I want to say it was probably in the 90s, and I saw it around when it was made, um, which means I was way too young to watch that because it was kind of vulgar in places. But... Um, <laughs> Boy, I, come to think, I don't even know the name of it right now, but um, it was it was really interesting and kind of depressing. Well, pretty much anything that has to deal with a um, music person biography is always depressing. <laughs> Ray Charles, he was great. Guess what? A heroin addict and an adulterer. Oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, other stuff. Did you? You haven't seen Quantum of Solace yet. No, I actually haven't seen any James Bond movies. Oh, really? Ever. Okay, well, um, see uh, 
like Casino Royale because it was really good, and uh, then then go watch it in earlier Bond movies because they're nothing like that. Um, <laughs> but, well, you know, it was it was a we're kind of in the like era of reboots yeah, right yeah, now yeah. where everybody wants to start everything over, and so you know, Batman got rebooted, Bond got rebooted. Sadly, Superman did not get rebooted. Um, but uh, Star Trek's getting rebooted. So, um, so you know. <laughs> He's Bond is like um, getting serious finally. I mean, like really serious. And a lot of uh, a lot of rev- I've been reading a lot of reviews of Quantum of Solace. I haven't watched it yet, um, but I'll probably try to see it this week sometime. Um, what are the reviews like? Are they any? Are they approving? Or um, last time I checked, uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it was at like sixty six percent on the Tomato Meter, which is pretty good for a movie like that. Um, and it, so, uh, but obviously that's real close to fifty percent. So like, there's a lot of people disagreeing with each other on it, and and it, a lot of a lot of people are complaining that it's still not Bond enough. They don't like the fact that he's like, um, we got a Bond movie where we have to watch Bond like soul search. Everybody's like, you can soul search on your own time, pal. We want to watch you blow up stuff, you know. And I think God forbid we have any literary issues in in, an, in a spy film because those aren't real people at all. Yeah, but then of course you get the you get the regular reviews of of because it's Bond, it's it's uh, you know the characters are two dimensional, mm-hmm. and so the same people that are saying we don't want him to go so the soul searching, he's James Bond, or are, are I think a lot of them are the same people who are also saying, yeah, we also uh, they're also too too two dimensional, <laughs> and uh, there's there's not enough there's not enough innovative storytelling in this film, and and um, you know plenty of plenty of cars exploding and stuff, and um, they're they're saying that the shooting is very uh, born esque, only you can kind of tell what's going on. <laughs> But again, I like the Bourne series anyway. Oh, I loved it, actually. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. The, the thing I like the most about the Bourne series is that um, it's three movies that were all made two and three years apart, but it feels like one movie, and I really enjoyed that about it. Um, <laughs> it, 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 never, it never feels like it's there, there's, a, there's a different direction going on. You, you, can, you can watch all three all at once, and it feels like one movie. And it's cool because they didn't shoot it that way. You know, Lord of the Rings feels that way because they shot it that way. That's true. You see what I'm saying, but but yeah. Born wasn't that way, and so it's really kind of neat. Uh, what didn't you like about the about the Born series? See, what I didn't like about the Born series is that it was basically one extended chase scene, and that was pretty much all I got out of it. Oh, okay, okay, they're running again. Okay, somebody got shot, and now they're running again. Now there's going to be dialogue, but they're going to have it while they're running. And why are they running? Apparently, exercise is healthy. This is a movie for kids where people get shot. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I somewhat enjoyed that about it. But you're right. I mean, it's not the deepest movie. They're, they're not the deepest movies in the world. Um, but I don't know. I think um, my wife liked them a lot. A lot of people but liked them. A lot likes, of my friends liked them, too. I Sarah just likes stuff where it. people, where stuff explodes. And... <laughs> Boom! Yay! Cheer! <laughs> We're gonna um, clap, guys. Um, I, I don't know. I, I liked it because it was. I don't know. It was. It was edgy, but not bloody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like it had a bit of a twenty four feel, but it wasn't. Um, but it wasn't so in your face and like. I don't know. I suppose in a, in a day and age where torture porn is all the rave, it's nice to have something that isn't so garishly red. Yeah, I, I did. I did feel like it was escapist fiction. I mean, I did, and of course, and of course, obviously, these are novels that were written what, back in the back in the fifties, sixties. I, I don't, I don't remember. It but was escapist. They were all trying to escape, hence running. Yes, but you know what I mean. <laughs> escapist in the sense of I don't feel like I'm in the real, real world watching these movies, and that, that's, that's true. And, and that's the difficulty with things like Twenty Four and stuff like that, where where they're, they're they are they do hit too close to home, mm-hmm. um, even. Even when um, all of the uh, terrorist activity happens in LA every uh, every uh, season, and um, <laughs> and um, all of the, in LA, surely not. And all of the most important stuff uh, happens within a twenty four hour period every time. But you know, <laughs> besides that, twenty <laughs> four. Oh, <laughs> I get it. You, you need to watch some of that, Vince. It's funny. I should. I hear it's pretty decent. Or not funny, but like. But like funny, what's what's weird about it is I don't usually like that kind of TV, but I think it's just the format that gripped me. Mm. Um, and I I, I want to say I watched. I mean, I've seen all the way through season six, and I mean, which is the last season that, that was made. And I want to say um, I watched all of it in about a year, because very <laughs> often I would watch a whole season in four and a half days. 
<laughs> where I get in the I get in the summer and I'd just be home a lot, and so I'd watch it all at once because um, that's kind of impressive. <laughs> every episode is a cliffhanger, and so I couldn't help it. I was watching them like eight at a time. <laughs> because there's more. Oh my god! Yeah, because of course you know every every episode is an hour of a day, and so there's no way to do this without it constantly being cliffhangery. And mm-hmm. and um, I've never watched the show while it was on. Like I always waited till it was on DVD. And so I, I can't actually imagine watching this week to week. I think I'd get lost. <laughs> They're going to come out with a movie and call it 48. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there is a lot of talk about a Jack Bauer movie. And I oh, think, okay. And I think it's supposed to happen at some point, but I but they're saying it won't be real time. If well, it happens. That's, it'd be for the best. We'd just be chilling watching 24 hours worth of movies. <laughs> well, no, I think I think what would worry if it was real time, I mean, if it was a regular length movie, it was like two, two and a half hours, and it's real in, in real time, I'm just not sure how interesting this would be, you know what I mean? Coffee no, drinking and nobody, toothpicking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nobody gets to have a cup of coffee. Um, <laughs> Jack Bauer shaving. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the lather. <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. What's wrong with me? Um. So, what other movies are coming out? Uh, obviously, obviously, the best stuff is going to be after Christmas, right? Yeah. Let's let's see what other movies are coming out. <laughs> Real. Well, of course, we got like um, obviously, obviously, Star Trek, which I'll talk about a little bit later, and then um, and then Watchmen. Um, which Ooh, is the one yeah. I'm really looking forward to. Watchmen looks pretty it good. It looks spectacular, pal. I've, I was a little worried because, you know, Watchmen is such a, uh, such a big thing to undertake, you know, any, you know, undertake, I don't even know if that's the right word to use, but it's such a, it's such a big project. It was almost a novel with, you know, pictures. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and of course, um, Alan Moore made it saying that, uh, you know, this is, this is the graphic novel that you mm. could never make into a movie, and then they're making it into a movie, <laughs> which is why he's not involved in it. And also, you know, the, the Have director... Have you ever seen pictures of him? He's yeah. the scariest looking guy in the Alan universe. Alan Moore is a creepy dude, and I think it's not so much... I don't know. I can't tell if it's... This is not a guy I'd want to meet in a dark alley, man. I mean... Yeah. I can't tell if he if he is creepy or if he wants to be creepy. Oh, one of those. It it seems to be just a little bit of an act, but then again, he is strange, to say the least. Well, have you ever seen pictures of Ben Edlin? I don't even know who that is. The guy who created the Tick. Oh, and he no, worked on Angel, and he's he's worked on other shows too. Is he pretty um, creepy? He's he's a little he's kind of scraggly looking. I mean, I was surprised when I saw him, but but if you ever listen to him in interviews and stuff, I mean, he's real well spoken. It's, it's pretty interesting. Um, by the way, speaking of, I know we're jumping all, all over the place, but speaking of Ben Edlin, you, you know that he, um, he uh, like I said, he worked on Angel a lot, and and, um, and I think I think he may have been one of the producers of Firefly. He worked closely with Whedon, hmm. and um, and he uh, wrote the puppet episode of, of Angel. <laughs> he, he wrote, and I, I want to say he may have directed it, but it, I'm not sure if that's, if that's the case, but I know he, I know he wrote that screenplay, and um, that's part of why it's like the funniest episode of that series um if you think about the tick oh yeah you know and then you think about um smile time i mean it's hilarious it is <laughs> oh my goodness anyway we were talking about watchmen yes watchmen <laughs> the uh the trailer looks fantastic it absolutely does well have you seen the new one the new trailer no, I have. okay it's it's with quantum of solace and um i it's on it's on youtube right now and right. um i i watched it the other day we you should take a look at it. Maybe, maybe we'll talk about it a little bit next week. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's cool. <laughs> the thing that's got me worried it, it's, about it's it, extended. It's like a two and a oh, half minute trailer. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty long. So the thing that's got me worried about Watchmen is, uh, well, I'm going to pull the the old the old uh, trump card out of my hat. The one that I always talk about whenever I get worried about Watchmen. But it's it's directed by the guy that directed the remake of Dawn of the Dead, which, if you've seen it, is craptastic. It is just so incredibly bad. Yeah, and I know you don't like 300, but he also did 300. Yeah, and it was and very stylish, but that's not his doing. It's his team. <laughs> yeah, but he can still direct a movie. I mean... Yeah, and I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I'm like, just saying it And I like 300 a lot. I don't want to get in an argument about this, but I did. I really, Let's fight! I really enjoy it. As, <laughs> as, much as, uh, as much as there was no plot to be had, um, I, I, sure, I sure enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Silent. Like there's gonna be a thought following yes, and it didn't come out. Yeah. Um. I don't know, Vince. I think it's. I. I. I, 
Yeah. Looking at the trailers, either the, are there it's going to be that good of a movie, or somebody knows how to make a really good trailer out of a really bad movie. That, yes. Correct. I can't imagine how something that looks like that could be bad. And, and the other thing um, I, I want to talk about with Watchmen is, I, do you get the impression that it's going to be less violent than you might have expected? Maybe a little, but then again, not necessarily. It could be very comic book style violence, you know, kind of like Three Hundred, where everything right or muted. Sin City. But but ta- I mean, taking a look at that it, again, you need to see that new trailer. But I mean, but I mean, looking at it, it, I don't know. It's got a bit of a obviously more more fantasy esque stylized. It's it reminds me a little bit of Begins in Dark Knight. Um, in, 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 the, in the way in the way it's being shot and it kind of needs to be though yeah and Otherwise. of course and of course I think I think it's got an R rating I don't know if they've even come out and said what the rating is it, I'm sure it will or at least that was my expect <laughs> I, I mean, there's even what, nudity sorry, in the comic book that, so. that was what I was expecting yeah um, but see that that's what I'm saying I'm not sure they're gonna go as far as the comic did I'm not sure there's gonna be any nudity in it at all I'm not I doubt sure they will. I don't I mean, think there will be and I and I wonder about language and stuff. I mean, the the, the, the graphic novel it has quite a bit of language in it too, if I remember right. But yeah, the graphic novel I thought would, was was interesting. The idea of turning that into a movie because uh, there seems to be parts of the not the graphic novel that are just radically different in tone, and it seems like there's parts where are a little uh, noirish with dealing with Rorschach, and then there's parts that are uh, very fantasy dealing with Doctor Manhattan, and right. then of course you have this uh, Vietnam. Oliver Stone type of feeling with the, the comedian. I see. So it's almost like it's almost like three or four entirely different genres being done at once. Yeah, and You've the movie looks like styles. it's not going to be done with the various different styles. It looks like they're going to focus on a, that. Doctor a little Manhattan similar fantasy. to that. A little similar to that Poe novel we just read. Yeah. Where where um where I uh, Vince and I are in are in a class together. Um, at, up in, uh, by the way, Vince and I are English students at KU. In case anybody cares, I'm graduating next semester. Yeah, go um, English. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, anyway, Vince and I are both writers and um trying to eventually make it in that world and um and we're in a uh, we're in american lit class right now and uh, the, the novel we just finished reading was um poe's uh narrative oh, yeah. of arthur gordon Pym. i almost said edgar huntley <laughs> <laughs> which was the other novel we read no charles um, brockton brown's the narrative of arthur gordon huntley <laughs> <laughs> anyway so we just read um um uh, the narrative of um Pym, and it's it's interesting because um it it's it's kind of in three parts, and each one, and each part is almost um, a different mode, which you could do back then and can't really do so well now. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody wants everybody yeah. wants everything to be, you know, very um, um, cohesive and tone solid. That's it's what I got to be one tone. Cohesive is the word I was looking for. Well done. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so like so like the so like the beginning of it is like this sort of actiony adventure thing, and then the middle of it is. Uh, is um, kind of a what am I trying to say? It's a sailing narrative. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's a travel narrative, and then the last part is almost is bordering on science fiction before yeah. there was any science fiction, and there's a bit of that going on in Watchmen. <laughs> a little bit, but I think the uh, I think Alan Moore and uh, Dave Gibbons, the artist, managed to mesh these uh these various different styles well, all funny, together. I wasn't even thi- I wasn't even thinking that when I read it, but now that I think now, now that we look back on it now, mm-hmm. um I I am I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of seeing where you're coming from. But yeah, before I felt like it was pretty cohesive. Which is which is kind of funny considering that I think uh I think Alan Moore wrote The Watchmen and said, "Here," and just handed it to Dave Gibbons and Dave Gibbons said, "All right, cool. I guess I'll draw it then." <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I think he he handed it to him and said, "I don't want to have anything to do with it." What do you think of the art in Watchmen? The uh, the art in the movie or the art in the comic no in, the, in 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 the original graphic novel. I think the 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 art in the original graphic novel was uh, one. I think it's fantastic. Dave Gibbons does good work. Two, I think it's interesting because it's almost not creepy. I don't know. I don't want to say it's not creepy at points, but it's it's very not Alan Moore-ish. If you've seen Alan Moore, he looks creepier than any character in the comic book. <laughs> <laughs> does Alan Moore do any drawing? Do I don't know? think so. I don't, I don't think, think he, he does. does. If he does, I'm sorry, Alan Moore. <laughs> 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 but, but still. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I liked a lot. I felt like um, there were places in, in it where I felt like the, the drawing was a little too simplistic, and then there'd be like a giant full page spread that was just incredibly detailed. Mm-hmm. 
that was really pretty. And, and I'm especially re- thinking of I haven't read this in a couple of years, and so there are there are definitely places I'm not remembering. But it, but the, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most as far as those full page spreads go is um, the owls ship. Oh yeah, you remember that? And they had that big spread where it comes out of the water and the water's dripping off of it. I mean, like that's one of the prettiest images in the whole novel. And, and I think and they have that in the trailer as well. Yeah, for the movie. it's it's in there, and it looks just like that. Which, between that and Doctor Manhattan's. Uh, well, his split personality, we'll call it. We, uh, we in the theater, we meaning uh, my brother and I, who were watching the trailer during Dark Night, went, "My God, that's beautiful!" Yeah, it, it was. It was just astonishing. My the hair on the back of my neck just stood up. I was tingling all over. And of course, I've never heard Smashing Pumpkins use better. <laughs> that's that's true. I didn't realize that was Smashing Pumpkins. It was. Pumpkins. It that was, was a that great was, song choice. That was uh, well. And what's funny is I don't know if they got him. Uh, I don't know if they like re-recorded it or if they somehow remixed it or something, but it's slower than the than the actual song is. The song is, is moves at a faster clip. It's like twice that fast, and oh. and and they and they slowed it down and they took out all the crazy drum stuff in it. And um, anyway, that's the end. Is the beginning is the end, which was in the um, Batman and Robin soundtrack. Hmm. So I mean, they took a song from ten years ago. That was nineteen ninety eight. I want to say. And it sounded contemporary. Yeah, it did. Um, but they slowed it down and it, and it worked a lot better. And, and the music, I don't know anything about it, but the music in the new trailer is, is really good too. Um, <laughs> and going really well with that. So, what are you laughing at? Oh, I was just laughing, remembering Stephen Lynch. What if the guy from Smashing Pumpkins lost his car keys? Stephen Lynch is a is a singing comedian. If you haven't heard, it's, it's totally worth listening to. Some of it's dirtier than the rest of it, and not quite as funny, but he has a lot of great original stuff. In fact, if you can buy an album, buy his live albums, because his studio albums kind of suck. <laughs> they just, oh, really? They do. The studio albums, there's no energy, it's just Stephen Lynch singing into a mic, and uh, you really find that Stephen Lynch is in his element when he has a crowd in front of him, because he really feeds off that energy. Yeah, well, some people get really um, nervous mm-hmm. by themselves next to a microphone. They do. Kind of like you. Uh, there's a microphone in front of me. <laughs> I'm all scared and stuff. Well, um, we've really only got a couple minutes left, and we didn't get through like anything on our list, so I guess we'll do some more stuff next week, but we kind of got all into Watchmen and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we've, we've still got uh, Chuck and stuff to talk about. We'll do that next week. Um, Chuck the TV series. There's not a guy we know named Chuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's this dude right now. Anyway. Um, Chuck Brock and Brown. <laughs> Um, uh, Vince, uh, why don't, why don't you, uh, do your, uh, two minute rant for the week? <laughs> All right. Here's my two minute rant, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a big Punisher fan. I have been since, uh, since I read Garth Ennis' first appearance writing Punisher. It was fantastic. The, uh, the Welcome Back Frank stuff. It was great. If you haven't read it, read it. Everything that he's done on Punisher is, is completely worth reading. Now, the movies is where I'm starting to go a little bit uh, waning on my faith in the uh, Marvel U. And Because uh, most people have seen the most recent Punisher movie, and I'm sure somebody out there has probably seen the, uh, the 80s one that came out at the same time of Batman. Now, the new one has a whole lot of... Uh, faith that people are putting into it. They really want it to be good, and, well, Punisher fans, as far as we go, anyway. But, and I had a lot of faith in it, too. The trailer looked fantastic, until I saw one moment of Jigsaw, and ladies and gentlemen, it scared the pants off of me. And I will do my impression of Jigsaw for you, and maybe it'll scare you as well. The Punisher's not the only one who can take the lore into his own hands. And he's tucking his head down, he's looking at the <laughs> ground, he's sticking out his chest like he's some uh, some creepy, and I don't mean creepy as in creepy, Alan Moore frightening, I mean creepy as in, I mean <laughs> creepy as in, why are you even doing that, you common thug looking freak, <laughs> to put it bluntly. And not even freak because he's boogered up with the, uh, the facial, facial scars. This is frightening, and I'm worried about my new Punisher movie, I want it to be so good. But there's my rant for the week. <laughs> all right, my two-minute rant of the week. <laughs> you all right there, Vince? Don't move your bag. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, okay, so my two-minute rant of the week um, is, is also, um, just frankly, about a trailer. See, there's no movies to watch right now, so we're just going to talk about trailers <laughs> this week. <laughs> 
Okay, my two-minute rant uh, this week is about the new Star Trek trailer. Uh, like I said, I didn't get to see Quantum of Solace, but I watched it on uh, YouTube, and... Um, the uh, the new Star Trek trailer um, looks kind of kind of good. What's really funny about it is all we really get um, for the most part is the same stuff as the few snapshots we've gotten so far. So like um, you know, Paramount gave us uh, five or six promotional shots, and they made sure that every single one of them was in the trailer. So I didn't feel like I was getting a lot of new information. <laughs> um, but so, but uh, some of the new stuff I got was that apparently uh, James T. Kirk rides a motorcycle, and um, apparently he also drives cars off of bridges when he's in his teens and that's really strange to me <laughs> um, it, it he, he has like he's in this classic car and he drives it off of and then he like and then he like gets up I don't I don't know exactly what what is supposed to happen in this scene but like this is how they start the trailer okay it's like this this I don't know if it's a Porsche or what, but it's this classic car, and it's driving down the road really fast, and as soon as I watched it, as I started watching this, I thought that whoever put it on YouTube had messed up. I thought it was a trailer for a different movie, because I've never seen that in Star Trek, right? And then and then this kid gets out, and he's got this really kind of high-pitched voice, and he's like, and, and there's this... And there's this weird looking guy with a helmet who, who's like, who are you? And then, and then, <laughs> and then he, and then he goes, and then he goes, I'm James Tiberius Kirk! And I'm like, wow, really? Anyway, so, um, obviously the new Star Trek movie is a reboot and it's not in exactly the same continuity that we all have known and loved and I'm okay with that as long as it's good. Um, I also still kind of wonder, um, where exactly Leonard Nimoy is coming in all this, and I think that it's supposed to be um, some future, some time travel stuff, some, you know, old Spock goes back in time to help young Spock um, stop a Romulan from destroying Earth in the past, which I, which is a which is a rumor going around right now, but I'm pretty sure that's probably what they're doing, and so I still kind of wonder if it is a real re reboot, or if it's going to be a reboot of um, original continuity rebooting itself, and... <clears throat> And so all of the new stuff is because of crazy time travel. And so I wonder if it's not going to be instead of just a, a uh, prequel, but a sequel that takes place in the past. And I still really hope that that's, that that's the way they end up going. And then they can change anything they want to, and I'll be okay with it. But Kirk on a motorcycle and driving a Porsche is weird to me. <laughs> okay, I'm done. I mean, that was probably longer than two minutes, but... I don't care, because that's pretty funny. <laughs> Kirk cruising the babes. <laughs> it was weird. And then he, like, drives his motorcycle up to where they're building the Enterprise. Like, they're building the Enterprise on Earth. Which has got a lot of fans all freaked out. They're like, the Enterprise was not built on the planet, you know? It was up in space. And I'm like, I don't really care about that very much. It doesn't really bother me, but... Um, but Kirk riding a Harley kind of does. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little different, you know? And, uh, I don't know. I guess the idea of, the idea of James T. Kirk being... This kind of, you know, I don't know if he's like if he's supposed to be like a rebellious teenager or if, or if he's just like you know a thrill seeker. Like Kirk being a thrill seeker when he's a kid is like it makes sense to me. That's not so weird. But why does he have to do it on like twentieth century? <laughs> you would think that if they had the technology to boldly go where no man has gone before, they would have boldly found some new source of fuel. <laughs> yeah, or well, and, and when I when I told my wife about it, I think it was Sarah who said this. She was like, well. D does the motorcycle at least hover? <laughs> like, no, Sarah, it kind of looks like a Harley. Uh, a hovering motorcycle with wheels. That's fascinating. Well, that is all the time we've got for this week, Vince. <laughs> it's probably for the best anyway. <laughs> So uh, we'll see everybody next week. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be doing this at the same time. And, um, and thanks a lot for listening. Thank you, guys.